So, good morning, everyone. I just want to take up a moment of your time before you, you begin the choral service to, to welcome all of you uh, to this, uh, in a way, unique choral service for this unique time. I'd like to welcome all of the, the pupils and teachers uh, who are joining us from the, from the school. Uh, it's been a very difficult term for everybody, but um, you really have handled the, the situation wonderfully well. All of you, you have been a great credit uh, to yourselves and to the school and indeed the principal and the teachers likewise. Um, I'm full of admiration for all of you um, to have kind of got through these difficult days in school uh, with, such, uh, with, with such dignity and uh, such calm most of the time. So congratulations to have got this far. And it's wonderful, I think, to um, conclude the term on this joyful note. It's a difficult time, but Christmas is a hopeful time because we remember that God gave his son as the greatest gift he could give us. And his son as risen Lord is with us every day of our lives and is with us as light in our darkness, as strength in our weakness, as hope in our despondency. And so we have to hold on to that in these times. The Lord is with us and we will come through it. And I think the carol service is just one expression of our hopeful faith, which we all need at this time. And I'm grateful to all those who have prepared for it so well and I hope it will it will lift the hearts of all who are taking part in it both here in the church and in the school and at home and even though we can't sing along as it were um, you can sing in your heart uh, as you listen uh, and are moved by the beautiful singing which which I've heard at the rehearsal um, that we're about to hear now so um, I take the, this opportunity just to wish you all a very blessed and happy and safe and healthy Christmas. And please God, when we gather again in the new year, uh, we'll be looking into more hopeful times. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to Mary, who was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The angel went to her and said, 
Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, How will this be? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. The angel then left her. The Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own town. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay at the inn.
There were shepherds living out in the fields near Bethlehem, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the God Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to all on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they they had been told. After Jesus was born, during the time of King Herod, uh, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. He called together all his advisors and asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. Then Herod called the Magi. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may go to and worship him. They went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until they stopped over the place where the child was. There they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their gifts and presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warmed in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. prayers of the faithful. Lord, as we prepare to celebrate your birth, we pray that you will open our eyes to see you in everyone we meet. Enter into our world of love, work, of hope and doubt, and bless us with your gift of joy and peace this Christmas. Lord, hear us. Lord, 
we pray for those members of our school community who have suffered in any way through bereavement, illness or personal tragedy. Let us pray that they will have a peaceful Christmas. May God heal their pain and keep their faith alive during this season and the coming new year. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray, for, we pray for those who are unfortunate in our society, all those who are unemployed, homeless, and who suffer the consequences of poverty. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for children all over the world that they will not waste the talents that they have been given in life, that they will bring joy and happiness to each other and recognize the beauty of life around them. Lord, hear us. Thank you to all the members of the Prefect Executive who did the readings today. Thank you to our smaller than usual choir. And of course, thank you to Ms. Harns and thank you also to Vinny who provided the sound so that we could hear the marvelous voices of you all. And although a shortened version of our annual carol service, I believe it has been more meaningful and perhaps more heartfelt when we consider the challenges that we faced this year and the challenges that we continue to face. We are grateful to Father Martin and the parish of St. John the Baptist for facilitating us today and also on several other occasions this year. Christmas can be a difficult time, especially when we miss loved ones through death, illness or separation. And this year, our smaller celebrations will be there to ensure that there will be fewer empty spaces at future family gatherings. All of us have made sacrifices this year and there may be many more required in the near future. But I think we can draw comfort from the achievement of scientists in manufacturing a vaccine that gives us light. Thank you to the entire school community for all your efforts in keeping the school open safely over the last few months. And I'd just like to share with you a reflection that will perhaps give us hope and cause for reflection over the coming days. Christmas is a time for celebration, to spread love, to offer friendship for reconciliation. Christmas is a time for reflection, to illuminate hope, to alleviate suffering, for communication. Christmas is a time for happiness, to wash away sorrow, to acknowledge a neighbor, for tenderness. Christmas is a time for giving, to accept gifts, to give thanks for living. Christmas is a time to cast differences aside, to pardon transgressions, to forgive grievances, to abandon, to abandon foolish pride. Christmas is a time to remember all the children of God who are suffering in December. Christmas is a time to praise the Lord for the beauty of his creation and his infinite love and compassion. Christmas is a time to think of Christ upon the cross and the sacrifice he made so that we can celebrate Christmas. I'd like to wish you all a happy, a holy, and a healthy Christmas. And as we conclude our service, as Father Martin said, normally at this time I'd be asking people to sing, but if we can sing with our hearts and take away some of the joy that I hope you have shared today. Thank you. <laughs>